Hi, vinyl community. My name is Richard and I'm from the Netherlands. And through this quick video, I would like to introduce myself to you, the vinyl community. I am uh, 34 years old. I live in the Netherlands and um, I'm a vinyl lover. I love vinyl. What else can I say about it? It's like you, all of you, who also like vinyl and don't like to share your records with the rest of the vinyl community. So the last couple of weeks I have been watching videos from YouTube and uh, I have seen wonderful collections of records. Some of them I'm quite jealous of. Um, and um, so I was thinking maybe, you know, it's about time to introduce myself as well and to mingle in all the conversations about vinyl. I don't have a really large collection of vinyl uh, because I just started collecting, uh, basically, uh, just started. Uh, I mean, I have been involved in vinyl for, uh, you know, a big part of my life, but somewhere in, you know, when I was younger, you know, I started to switch to CDs. I'm 34 years old, so as you can imagine that in the 80s, when I was just a kid, vinyl was common. I mean, everyone had vinyl in their house and maybe just a couple of CDs because it wasn't really until the second part of the 80s that the CDs really, you know, started to get big, started their revolution. Uh, so everyone at that time had vinyl. Vinyl, of course, at that time was a lot, you know, uh, cheaper than CDs. For example, you could buy a new vinyl record from a popular group for around 15 to 20 bucks while CDs at that time were more like t uh, 40 bucks. These days, it's the other way around. Now you pay just maybe 20 bucks, maybe 15 to 20 bucks for a CD, and um, 30 bucks for a record. Anyway, so when I was just a little kid, I always um, loved rock and roll music, old music, you know, like from the 50s and 60s. Uh, I really grew up with that. My father was a big Elvis Presley fan, and he always told me the story that uh, whenever I was a kid, just a baby, uh, and I would be crying, he would put up a Elvis Presley record, and um, then I would stop crying. The first record I probably, as a baby, got introduced to was this one. This is Elvis Sings for Children and Grown Ups 2. And this was an RCA record of Elvis Presley, which was released in 1978, which was my birth year. Anyway, the song, of our, or the, the record is just that basically it's a collection of movie songs from different uh, kind of movies Elvis Presley starred in. And these would be songs he would play or sing for children in the movie. And they, you know, made a, a compilation album. In this, this case, it's a gatefold record with all the lyrics inside of it. And uh, they called this record Elvis Sings for Children. Um, the first one I ever listened to. Anyway. I still have it in my collection, by the way. This is the original, the original one that's always been uh, in my collection. And I think when I was about 10 years old, my father gave me a stereo set for my birthday. And that was a, uh, you know, a set with a uh, turntable and with a um, uh, cassette deck. And there was also a CD player in it. But CDs were so expensive, so that when I was just a little kid, I would buy records instead of CDs. Um, so, um, the first record I ever bought was an Elvis Presley record because I was just, you know, a big Elvis Presley fan at that time. I basically only liked Elvis Presley and some, some other rock and roll music. And um, I think that the first one I ever bought is this one. It's a Camden release. Camden was the budget label of RCA. And they released uh, like compilation albums most of the time. Uh, all uh, records were just, you know, movie songs most of the time. Uh, this one actually pretty good, you know, track listening. Anyway, I bought this most probably because of the sleeve. I mean, when I was a kid of 10 years old, I looked at the sleeves first and then uh, to the content. And this obviously, is, this is a, a great picture of Elvis Presley. This is from his movie Flaming Star. And, uh, you know, it worked like that, that, that in those days. I, I would uh, look at the sleeve, and if the sleeve looked good, I would buy the record, if I could pay for it. Uh, another one of that same period 
uh, I bought was this one. Uh, I love this the, the picture because I was a big fan of Elvis Presley from Aloha as a kid. My father had a videotape. Uh, I clearly remember it was a blue uh, sleeve with a uh, drawing of Elvis Presley on it. And uh, that videotape costed about 100 bucks. Imagine that, 100 bucks for a videotape. Well, these days you can buy the DVD with all the remastered sound and the beautiful picture quality for just 20 bucks. Anyway, this was one of the first records I bought for my own pocket money when I was just a little kid. Pretty good shape. I mean, imagine I was just a little kid. I wasn't as careful as I am today. It still isn't a good condition. Anyway, when I got a little older in my teens, I started to like hard rock music. Hard rock music, um, like uh, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, and more like traditional heavy metal. Uh, because a friend of mine introduced me to Iron Maiden through um, the CD Power Slave. Whenever I heard that one, I became, became a huge Iron Maiden fan. Immediately bought every CD Iron Maiden had released so far. And then in 2003, when they released their second record after the return of Bruce Dickinson uh, as the lead vocalist of Iron Maiden, uh, they released this CD called Dance of Death. And of course, it was like I was already waiting in front of the store uh, until it opened so that I could be the first one to buy that one. And I went into the, the CD store to buy Dance of Death, and to my big surprise, I bumped into this one and I was thinking huh do they still make records I mean like vinyl records so after many years of um, uh, listening to CDs and that kind of stuff I suddenly uh, was reintroduced into vinyl again through this record so as a big Iron Maiden fan I immediately bought this one and brought it home with me while I didn't have them got a record player anymore so I, I bought a vinyl record but I didn't have a turntable. A couple of weeks later I w bumped into this one also a great a vinyl record of Iron Maiden this is Edward the Great which is a compilation uh, record and when I found this one and I bought it immediately this one cost me uh, to, uh, to buy a turntable again because what use would my vinyl records have if I don't have a record player I am not the kind of guy who buy vinyl and keep it in their seal. I want to play it. I want to hear it. So I bought a record player so that I could play these ones. And I remember that for the first time I put it, the needle on the vinyl. I was thinking, whoa, you know, that, that nostalgic feeling of, uh, you know, like for a moment it, it, it felt like the time stood, had stood still. So it, you know, it awakened my uh, love for vinyl a little. So I just started to, you know, take all my older records out of the boxes and started to listen to those as well. So these two records, they started my passion for vinyl, but not really a big passion. I just started to buy vinyl just once in a while. All right. So it wasn't until last year that I really started to feel a bigger passion for vinyl uh, than I had before uh, through Elvis Presley records because slowly but surely I'm starting to fall back into my old passion for rock and roll music and Elvis Presley so I started to uh, to uh, to uh, to buy Elvis Presley records again and, uh, so uh, yeah well anyway um, a couple of years ago when I went to a market like a uh, like a market, you know. I um, stumbled upon a, uh, a, a a guy with a lot of records, and I um, looked through it, and I bought a couple of hard rock uh, records just because they looked good. Um, and one of the records uh, in that um, stash of records was this famous record, "Slip of the Tongue" from White Snake, and. This one, you know, really um, uh, introduced me to the music of Whitesnake and it didn't take long before I got the whole CD collection of Whitesnake. Anyway, it's not what I want to talk about because one of the other records I bought in that same, 
you know, finding was this one, Beth Lambert's Hysteria. And when I heard this one for the first time, um, it was actually two weeks ago when I heard this for the first time because I bought it, but I never listened to it up until two weeks ago. I was really stunned. I was thinking, whoa, this is great music, you know. Um, and I never heard it before. So when I was looking on the internet uh, to some background information about this, it appeared to be that this was a real classic album, that this is really a big one. And I never heard it before. And uh, But I think it's so great, so fantastic, uh, well done, um, that I was thinking, I want to, you know, buy more Death Leopard records and um, so yesterday I went out to a record store and this is where I want to conclude my video my introduction with the last record I bought so far so yesterday I went to a uh, record store to see if I could find more Def Le Leopard records but unfortunately I could find only one and of course I bought it and it's this one so this one is a uh, Pyromania from 1983 and this uh, also is a Japanese pressing. Uh, you can still see the obi here. And um, yeah, I listened to it yesterday, and it's a great record as well. It's different than his, uh, Hysteria, but it's a great hard rock record. So uh, so now I'm decided to buy all the Death Leopard records as well. So that is going to be my search for the next couple of months. Anyway. Uh, with the last record I have bought so far, I would like to conclude my video. Um, I hope you liked my video, uh, and uh, it's, it just showed a couple of things, you know, uh, to introduce myself. Uh, but but remember that uh, that it, it, it are your videos which inspires me to buy more vinyl. And uh, also, what I like about this vinyl community is that it enables me to learn more about other genres of music and other kind of records and uh, sometimes when some of you talk about a certain record uh, I find it so interesting that I want to look out for that record myself and uh, so I really learn a lot of stuff from uh, from the vinyl community on YouTube and I hope I can add something to this vinyl community as well so so far in my video I have tried to keep it a little short I've tried to, to video one before but it was over 20 minutes and I don't want to make a video as long as that so I hope you like it uh, at least I do like your videos and I'm certainly um, intending to record more videos to talk a little more about my vinyl records and uh, in the meantime uh, enjoy your videos as well see you in the next video